Hey there, welcome to day 321 of our Get Your Goals Annual Challenge. Today we're gonna do a financial goals, financial area and aspect of our life summary and review. And then we're gonna do a quick audit and check in as to where are we with respect to the financial goal that we set for ourselves in June. We talked about, we spent the whole month of June talking about different financial topics as well as running through the SOAP framework and our seven step goal process to make sure that we put things in place that we could achieve the goal and objective that we set for ourselves. Now, if we noticed yesterday, I realized that I had totally dropped the ball on my spiritual goal and I need to pick that up again. And I'm gonna combine that with my uh, contribution goal because I think that's a great combination and it'll make sure that I actually get the things I need to get done done for both of those goals by the end of this year. Uh, and that's part of why we're doing this review now. If we waited till next month, it would be too late. We wouldn't have time to make any adjustments. But if we're, since we're looking at it now in November, we have plenty of time to at least make massive steps toward the goal we said we wanted earlier this year. So let's talk about some financial topics. I've got my giant magnifying glass. Take another sip of coffee. What did we talk about in June? June was our month for focusing on financial health and financial well-being and our specifically our financial goal. So as you can see, I have my handy dandy content calendar, but I did go through it yet last night before I went to bed and looked at the different topics we talked about. Similar by, by June, I'd figured out what I wanted to talk about every month. And so uh, we talked about our definition. We started the month with what is our definition of financial health and financial well-being? Because if we have to know what we want and what we're shooting for in order to set goals and objectives to get us there. So we did our definition. Then we talked about, of course, core values with respect to our financial well-being and health and our goals. And then next we talked about our thoughts and our beliefs because we know if we have beliefs that are butting heads, even at a subconscious level, it makes it really, really hard to achieve our goals and objectives. We did the seven why exercise, which is one of my favorite. We use it on ourselves. We never ask ourselves a series of seven whys, somebody else or something else is happening. We only ask it about ourselves because it gives us internal insight into our motivation, what drives us, what's most important to us. We did the, uh, we picked an area that we want to improve in our financial well-being and we soaked it up using our soap framework. I like my bars of soap better than my my graphics, but we said what is an area of our financial well-being, our financial life, our financial uh, situation currently that we want to improve. And we added the soap framework to it. We, we did the S for our situation or story and we identified what is our current situation and story with respect to this area of our finances and what do we want it to be. I can't remember what I did now, but maybe you have too much debt or too much credit card debt. Remember, we, we did talk about during the month debt. Debt can be good or bad, just like anything else can be good or bad. We talked about, uh, you know, going into debt to acquire assets is good. Going into debt just to pay for everyday expenses and living and things that we want, but we don't necessarily need right now uh, because we want to get instant gratification. Those are probably bad debts. So uh, <clears throat> we identify what the one thing was for us that we wanted to work on. Then we brainstormed options. And I'm gonna look because I think I had different, yeah, we did, to, when we were identifying our story, we used the 10 steps to create your story tool for coming up with brainstorming options. We did the six thinking hats uh, tool for <clears throat> analyzing our alternatives in order to decide what action to take immediately. We use pros and cons. I think we've used that. I, I'm doing these out of order, so we I mixed them up throughout the year when we were covering them, but now a couple of times they've been in the same order. Uh, <clears throat> but we'll cover all the tools in a nine day period anyway. Uh, and then progress. How do you know you're making progress? How do you know you're moving toward what it is that you want? And we talked about uh, different key indicators of financial health and expenses saving. Oh, oh, then we talked, okay, so we looked at different key indicators, key numbers that you can decide to look at to determine if you're moving in the direction you want for your financial health or away from your financial health or solving this problem in, in specifically. We talked about during the month expenses. We talked about savings. We talked about debt. We talked about investments. We talked about uh, emerging trends. We talked about insurance. We talked about uh, retirement planning. 
we talked about, I cannot read my writing. Oh, money is an exchange of value. <laughs> money is an exchange of value. We talked about, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, cost versus value. I get all choked up over that one. Uh, we talked about money mindset. We talked about abundance versus scarcity or abundance and scarcity mindsets. We talked about hiring money experts. How do you know who is the right person to help you manage your money or are the right experts to listen to? We talked about uh, coaches. We used the lifeline exercise, one of my favorites, where we plotted out key events in our life, just like we would for history class, a timeline, year we were born, uh, this year and beyond, I like to use, and then key milestone events that happened in our life. And we think about where were we financially when those things happened? Because as we do this and as we do it and add things to it over time, we have amazing epiphanies and aha moments that show us things that we haven't seen before. We see connections, we see uh, disconnections, we see l goals and objectives butting heads, and we have to decide what's the higher priority because the higher priority, at, at least at a subconscious level, is always gonna win. We're always gonna take action toward the thing that's most important to us, uh, whether we're aware of it or not. Uh, we talked about the connection between finances and all the other areas and aspects of our life. And I always like to share this graphic because here's the nine areas and aspects of our life and how they really are interconnected. Uh, sometimes we think that there's, and sometimes there's a directly relationship and sometimes there's an indirect relationship. There's a relationship between financial health and well-being and all the other areas of our our life framework. And we talked about and applied our financial goal process, our seven-step financial goal process that we identified in January, and we applied it to one area of our finances. I picked starting an additional stream of income, and I had a dollar amount associated with that that I want to achieve by the end of the year. That one, if I'm honest, isn't looking too good right now, because like the one from May, I let that one drop. Like with my spiritual one, I let that goal drop by the wayside a little bit because it was a whole bunch of family drama going on and other things took priorities. And that happens in our life. But now <clears throat> I can combine that with my contribution, my spiritual, and my financial goal. I can combine all three of those and probably hit my target by the end of the year. I'm gonna say there's probably a 75% chance. I wanna say 80, but I don't wanna overcommit to myself and then be all disappointed. Uh, so that's it. Our action item today is to look at and think about the financial goal that you set for yourself in June and check in with how are you doing with respect to progress. Me, not so good. You, hopefully, better on, on yours. But now is the time to tweak and test and make some adjustments to our plan and our strategy and our SMART goal process, et cetera, to ensure that we can make as much progress toward achieving that goal by the end of the year as we possibly can. If you need help with that, hit me up and ask. I'll be working on mine as well. Otherwise, have an awesome day. There's a write-up, of course, in Guide 17 of the Get Your Goals, not Get Your Goals, Get Up and Go Challenge, private Facebook group. Uh, otherwise, the videos are all there. There's tons of information there about how to do different things. We've talked about financial topics and financial area and aspect of our life for about four years now. So there's plenty of information. If you want to just search financial in the, in the sidebar, you'll get a bunch of different information on that that could or could not be helpful. Hopefully, it's helpful. All right. Otherwise, always ask. You can always ask me. Have an awesome day, and I'll, of course, be with you tomorrow.